cooking, one of the fundamental activities we partake in on a daily basis. And yet, despite this complete unavoidability, the art of cooking has barely changed over the last hundred years. We simply grab a cookbook and follow the steps. But in 2008, Nintendo sought to change all of that, to start a culinary revolution. How? Why? With this. Cooking guide. Can't decide what to eat. Or as he says it, Can't decide what to eat. Cooking guide. Good evening. Let's make something tasty. Hi there, welcome to Thomas Game Docs. So, as I mentioned, today we're talking about 2008's DS game Cooking Guide Can't Decide What to Eat. It's a pretty weird game, if you could even call it one. But before I show you around, I need to give a quick bit of context, so hang in there. You see, Cooking Guide Can't Decide What to Eat is actually the third game in a series of DS cooking guides. This entry is the first one to be released outside of Japan, but it was actually preceded by two titles never seen by us non-Japanese folk. And some of these titles are pretty weird. We start off with the fairly simple looking Shaberu DS Oyori Navi, which translates to It Talks DS Cooking Navigator. From the start, this game grabs your attention with its unique way of speaking. Shaberu DS Oyori Navi Maybe unique isn't so accurate, actually. Fans of the Tomodachi Life series may recognise the sound of that voice. It sounds almost identical to the synthesised voice from Tomodachi Collection for the DS. I think it goes without saying that this voice engine is practically identical behind the scenes. Oh, but the developers of Shabaru don't let this voice engine go to waste. You see, the unique selling point of this game is that it reads the recipe out loud to you. Check it out! Not only that, but you can tell the recipe to move on to the next stage just by talking to it. In the Japanese version, you say OK. 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 And here we uncover one of the fundamental problems of not just this game, but the entire series as a whole. I can never get it to understand me! But we'll touch on that later. As you can see, there's a huge number of recipes here, plus a calendar to keep track of what you're cooking and when. So, how'd this game even come about? Well, it was the work of two companies, Nintendo, of course, plus smaller developer Indies Zero. It's impossible to know which company the original idea came from, let alone which individual developer. But the two companies partnered with a third force, Tsuji Cooking Academy. This culinary school, based in Osaka, Japan, helped oversee all 200 recipes to check that they weren't, well, bad. Now, any other developer would think 200 recipes, state-of-the-art <coughs> voice recognition, endearing chef mascot, let's stop right there. But not Nintendo. Well, kind of Nintendo. This is where it gets a little complicated. From what I can tell, Nintendo actually licensed the Shabaru brand to another publisher, Koei, and they partnered with another developer, Payon to release, let me take a breath. It talks, DS Cooking Navigator, the ins and outs of the Imperial Hotel, the best chef de cuisine teaching everyday cooking. Oh, that's a title and a half. Now, the gist of this game is the same as the first one, but this time round, there's a bit of a twist. It's all based around the Tokyo Imperial Hotel. I'm not kidding. When you first start the game, you're asked which one of these seven restaurants you want to learn from, all of which being based inside the aforementioned hotel. Then, once you pick, you're given lessons by the actual head chef of the real-life restaurant. From the Imperial Hotel's own restaurant, which serves French food, you'll be taught by Kenichiro Tanaka. From the Japanese-style restaurant Nadaman, you can be taught by Takayuki Oshima. Again with Japanese cuisine comes Isecho, whose head chef is Toshiaki Takahashi. Another Japanese cuisine-serving restaurant is Kicho, whose head chef is Yuji Ito. If you're in the mood for some sushi, then restaurant Sushigen will be right up your alleyway, head chef being Naoyuki Kosei. Serving delicious Chinese food is Bekin, head chef Hidehiko Sakuma. And lastly, there's restaurant San Applause, putting a twist on traditional Japanese dishes, head chef by Hiro Mariyama. Phew, that's a whole lot of choices there. Okay, one more thing before we move on to the game we've all been waiting for. 
This game has 201 recipes, one more than the first game. I don't know if that's slightly petty or absolutely hilarious. Regardless, the following year, Nintendo returned to the helm of the Cooking Guide series, again joined by Indie Zero and Suji Cooking Academy. But they had a conundrum. The series had started small and then got considerably bigger. So where on earth could they take it from there? Well, that's the clue. Where on earth? Why specify? And so they promptly released this, known in Japan as Thank you, or as it was known in Europe, Cooking Guide. Can't decide what to eat. From the moment we first boot up the game, some pretty major changes are apparent. First off, that screechy voice is gone, replaced by this warm and comforting one instead. Can't decide what to eat. Cooking Guide. I feel like it's the vocal equivalent of a nice hot bath, you know? Maybe that's just me. But all voices aside, let's check out what this game has to offer, shall we? There are a few different modes here, but let's just dive in with Cooking Guide. And from here, we're offered a near plethora of sorting options. Let's try View All. And oh gosh, we are bombarded by hundreds upon hundreds of recipes. I think this might not be the most efficient way of sorting these things. If we back up a sec, we can try a few other options. There's sort by ingredients, sort by requirements, and sort by keywords. But I think the star of the show, the main event, is sort by country. The whole game is themed around the globe, after all. And so, we're taken to this big old map, containing each and every country of the world. I don't think they have all the country's cuisines, but the scale is nevertheless awe-inspiring. But which country should we start with for our first ever cooking guide dish? This isn't a decision to be taken lightly, you know. But I think I have the perfect country in mind. Yeah, okay, maybe I'm a little biased, but let's see what recipes the UK has on offer. Vegetable lasagna, Welsh rabbit, bangers and mash, chicken tikka masala. Hmm, I think we ought to go with bangers and mash. It is a classic after all. All right, so we're taken to this list of ingredients, which, yeah, they all seem okay. Next, we click steps and, spoiler alert, no peeking. Let's go straight on to cook. Right, let's get started. The first step is to chop the ingredients. You'll need a chopping board and a sharp kitchen knife. Okay, so I'm not gonna be actually cooking the recipe because as of writing this, it's 11.40 on a Monday evening. And as of recording this, it's... I think midday Wednesday. Either way, let's just follow along with our lovely chef guide. The first step is to chop the ingredients. You'll need a chopping board and a sharp kitchen knife. So as with the previous games, we can make use of some snazzy voice commands to browse through the recipe without getting mashed potato on our DS screen. But again, it never seems to work that well for me. Let's give it a shot though. Continue. Mm -hmm. Continue. Okay, peel the red onion. There we go. We can also say more details to give us a little more info. More details. Okay. To peel onions, first cut thin slices off the root end and the top of the onion and discard them. Plus, we can say repeat to get him to say the step again. Repeat. To peel onions, first cut thin slices off the root end and the top of the onion and discard them. Alrighty. And lastly, we can say go back to get him to go to the previous step. Go back. Okay. Peel the red onion. Okay, so that's the basics of the DS navigation stuff. Once we go through all the steps, which I'm gonna fast forward because there's 28 steps here, we get congratulated by the great chef himself. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to thank my friends, my family. Nice work. And at the end, we get this delightful stamp. There's so many color options. I think I'll go with green, a green stamp for a green boy. All right, so that's the basics of Shabaru, but it doesn't stop there. Because Nintendo of Europe decided to translate the game into a plethora of European languages. In Spanish, the game was called ¿Qué preparamos hoy? Cocina conmigo. That translates to What will we prepare today? Cook with me. In French, it was called Qu'allons-nous manger aujourd'hui? Leçon de cuisine. Which translates to What are we going to eat today? Cooking lessons. In Italian, it was called Que si mangia oggi? La guida in cucina. And that translates to, what are you eating today? The guide in the kitchen. And lastly, in German, it was called, Was wollen wir heute kochen? Kochkurs. Which translates to, what do we want to cook today? Cooking course. 
Side note, this is the only version of the game that I can consistently get to understand me. Wunderbar. All right, so that's the basics of Cooking Guide, can't decide what to eat. But there's a little more. Because a few months later, Nintendo decided to release the game in America, titled Personal Trainer Cooking. It was the first game in the so-called Personal Trainer series, followed by Personal Trainer Math and Personal Trainer Walking. It's a weird little series, actually, and I'd like to talk about some of the other games in the future. But focusing on Personal Trainer Cooking, Nintendo of America actually released this game alongside this very, very, very green DS. I have some pretty strong opinions about this DS, but there's a time and a place. After the game released across the globe, much like the recipes in it, the Shabaru series continued to live on, at least for a little. Our old friends at Koei released another one of their own cooking games, titled Simple Fun Pastry Navigator DS. It's not got the Shabaru branding on it like their Imperial Hotel one did, but at its core, this is the same as all the other cooking games. Our silky voiced chef is completely gone, replaced by this, I don't know, mole, maybe? <laughs> but other than that, the game is basically the same. I do like the whole gingerbread aesthetic it's got going on though. Top marks. That's not the weirdest game in the series though. In 2010, Nintendo partnered with the PBS TV show America's Test Kitchen to release the game America's Test Kitchen Let's Get Cooking. Oh, and to help with writing the recipes, they partnered with the magazine Cooks Illustrated. Truly a bizarre partnership, I'm sure you agree. And the game is also pretty weird. It kind of takes the concept of cooking guide can't decide what to eat and tries its best to glue it onto this concept of like a family cooking competition, which I guess is loosely based around America's Test Kitchen. It's all a little weird, but you know, it's up to them, I suppose. And that's the cooking guide series. What did you think? Would you follow a recipe from your DS? Let me know in the comments. Oh, but before you go, there's a cool little surprise in Cooking Guide that you get if you cook 19 different recipes. Did I laboriously click through 19 painstaking recipes just for this moment? You bet I did. So what's the surprise then? Well, it's the end credits, but in the Japanese version, it's actually this beautiful heart rendering ballad. And so I figured that would be a nice way to end the video. And while that's playing, I'm gonna go chop some onion. See ya.